Once upon a time, in the city of Verona, there lived two great families, the Montagues and the Capulets. They were both rich, but also quite stupid. They had an old blood feud, and neither side would let it go. If they did speak, which was rare, it would almost always end in a fight. Lord Capulet was the head of his family, and he planned to throw an enormous party. Predictably, he banned all Montagues from attending, but a young Montague named Romeo desperately wanted to go. His love, Rosaline, was going with a date, and he wanted to follow. Romeo's attraction was strange, since Rosaline was never particularly nice to Romeo. But Romeo wanted to love someone, and because he hadn't met the right girl yet, he chose to love the wrong one. So when the night came, Romeo went off to the party with his two friends, Mercutio and Benvolio. Lord Capulet was a gracious host and welcomed them. Everyone dressed marvelously for this party. The women were wearing their finest velvets and the men wore gem-studded swords. Romeo also wore his best with a black mask over his eyes and nose. After a while, Romeo saw the most beautiful girl. He completely forgot about Rosaline. But then he's spotted by Tybalt, an enemy Capulet. Tybalt goes to Lord Capulet, but Lord Capulet is too gracious of a host to cause a scene at his own party. So Tybalt just waited for his moment to start a fight with Romeo. Meanwhile, Romeo approached the beautiful girl. He danced with her, told her sweet words, and kissed her. But then her mother called for her. That's when Romeo realized the girl was Juliet, the daughter of Lord Capulet. The girl turned out to be equally interested in Romeo. She asked her nurse who that gentleman was, and the nurse replied it was Romeo, a Montague. Later that night, Juliet is standing on her terrace overlooking her garden. Romeo came to watch her because he loves seeing her. Not knowing that Romeo is hiding in the garden, Juliet verbally expresses her love for Romeo. Romeo steps out into the moonlight, and the lovers talk for a while. Eventually, they have to go to bed, and the two part ways, with plans to meet up later. The next morning, Romeo goes to Friar Lawrence and begs the friar to marry him to Juliet. After some hesitation, Friar Lawrence consents. Romeo then sends word to Juliet that all is well and they can get married the next morning. Then we learn that Friar Lawrence wants to marry the young couple to end their family's feud. So the next morning, Friar Lawrence weds the young couple. Romeo promises to visit Juliet's terrace that evening and the maid will help by getting a ladder. But tragedy strikes on that very day. Tybalt is enraged at Romeo's attendance of the Capulet's feast. Tybalt attacks Romeo and kills his friend Mercutio. But then Romeo kills Tybalt. For this, Romeo is banished. Romeo visits Juliet that night and they both cry at the thought of being separated. Then Juliet's father, who is ignorant of the fact that his daughter is now married, plans a wedding for her. He wants Juliet to marry a young gentleman named Paris, but she refuses. Juliet runs to ask Friar Lawrence for advice. He tells her that she should pretend to consent, and then in the meantime he will create a potion for her. This potion will make it appear as though she is dead for two days. Then they take her body to the church, and he and Romeo will rescue her. Lord Capulet was happy that Juliet consented to the wedding. Previously, he had seen her unhappiness and thought that this wedding would resolve her frustration. Unfortunately, it was quite the opposite. That's because Juliet wasn't frustrated about not having a husband. Instead, she was frustrated at being separated from her real husband, Romeo. So the next morning, Juliet's maid comes in to wake her but she won't wake up. 
the nurse cries out that Juliet is dead and her family comes running. They mourn her death and lay her to rest in a tomb. But at this point, Romeo didn't know Juliet was playing dead with the aid of a potion. That's because the friar's messenger got delayed. Making matters worse, Romeo's servant has heard of Juliet's death. Since he knows of their marriage, he runs and tells his master. Romeo weeps for his bride and says he will lie by Juliet's side tonight. Romeo brings poison with him and goes to the tomb where Juliet's family laid her to rest. But he runs into Paris, who was Juliet's groom-to-be. Paris tells Romeo that he faces a death sentence for returning to Verona. Then Paris gets angry and attacks Romeo. Paris loses the fight and dies. Romeo brings Paris into the tomb and lays him by Juliet's side. He talks sweetly to Juliet's motionless body and kisses her cold lips. Juliet is slowly approaching the point at which she'll reawaken. Just before she can, Romeo poisons himself and falls dead. Friar Lawrence walks in and sees the awful outcome. And then Juliet wakes up. She's horrified at the sight of both Paris and Romeo's lifeless corpses. The commotion of Romeo and Paris's fight had roused others. This makes the friar flee in terror. Juliet saw the empty poison vial and knew exactly what had happened here. She took Romeo's dagger and thrust it into her chest. Friar Lawrence eventually explained the entire situation to the two families. Both the Montagues and the Capulets were stricken with grief. The misery finally ended the feud they had been fighting for for so long.